Oh, oh. oh that's the good stuff. Not really good for you. That's pretty much pure DEET. 30% DEET. I think that's all we can get here. Anyways, it's uh, it's a beautiful mosquito extravaganza out here today. It just rained, but it's beautiful temperature for work and not so much for the bugs. I'm out here today for one reason, and that reason's probably going to be to take out some trees. I've thought about all the things you guys have said lately in the comments uh, after I moved this shed, and let's back up a bit just so you know what I'm talking about. After I moved this shed, I've been reading all the comments, getting some ideas, coming up with the best possible scenario for putting my brand new HM130 Max. That's my sawmill on a trailer. That's different than that sawmill over there, which obviously is stationary. So here's what I've come up with. I think the best possible solution for me is to put that trailer with the sawmill on it right about there. That way I can back it in, maybe back it out, maybe drive it out, who knows. We'll see how we end up after we clear some trees. But by positioning it there, I have right close access to putting the lumber. Uh, after I cut it, I also have access to um, uh, to actually get in here with the tractor and load logs. So what I'll end up with is I'll end up with the sawmill here. I'll end up with another log deck here. That's a log deck over there. That log deck will serve as that sawmill. This future log deck will serve as this sawmill. This sawmill will be able to come and go and I'll obviously uh, put a roof over this. So the roof I'm talking is basically an extension of this roof right here. So I think what I'm gonna end up doing is just extending those rafters out further and it'll probably come out somewhere in here uh, in terms of the width i'll just keep the width the same that way the sawmill can get completely out of the elements and worse come to worse if i one day decide that maybe that sawmill is going to go away maybe i'll sell it i will have a space for future storage of uh, of lumber that that is of course if the other sawmill makes its way up here because this one got sold but that's sort of the idea so we're going to work on clearing some trees here just got to figure out how many I'm going to clear. If we look back here, you can imagine the sawmills right here. I think for now, that one's kind of in the way for now. I think for now we're going to work on these ones right here. I don't want to get too ahead of myself. If you guys have ever cut when it's a bit warmer out, what will happen is you'll hit the ground with these red pines. And if you don't get them sawn into lumber or have the bark removed real soon, you'll end up with some, uh, some bugs boring holes in them. And I don't want that. And so... I need to make sure I plan out how many trees I can cut, how many trees I can process in about a two week window. Usually if I get any longer than that, that's when I start getting some bugs in the lumber. And if you guys make your way over here, this log I left too long. So it's definitely gonna have some bugs in it. Sometimes you can actually see the exit holes. And of course, when I wanna show you guys, I can't find any. So maybe we are okay with this log, but generally you can see the little exit holes from some of the bugs. We'll find out when we mill that sucker. All right, so let's get back to talking about this shelter here I'm gonna build. I'm gonna build the rafters at a two by sixes. Gonna have two foot on center spacing. In terms of the overall width here, I'm gonna probably make it have a 14 foot opening so it'll match that. But I might make the actual structure like 20 feet long because I think my long-term goal is to add an extension onto that mobile sawmill. Uh, that'll make that a Woodlander XL trailer, technically, because it will then allow me to cut up to 16 foot 11 logs. I think that's gonna be my long-term goal. Not quite there yet, because I've got this sawmill behind me, the older HM130, that can cut up to that 16 foot 11 inch length. I don't think I'm gonna add the extensions quite yet on my trailer, but I think that could be coming down, uh, down the road at some point. And so at the very least, I want to leave that option open. And so I'm going to make the uh, structure here a little bit longer than the lumber shed here. Uh, I'm also going to make the log deck, as I was mentioning, right in front of the sawmill. So if you can imagine, the sawmill will get backed in right there. Right in front of it, I will have my log deck. Partial covering of the log deck will happen by that roof. But I'd imagine that roof probably won't extend over the entire log deck. We'll see how we make out once we get going. So if you can imagine about eight feet of space from the edge of that lumber shed to the start of the log deck, then the log deck will probably come out a good eight feet or maybe even 10 feet. And then these trees will be gone. I can come in here, load logs onto the log deck, roll them onto the sawmill, cut the lumber there, load it right behind me into the lumber shed. I can also access that lumber shed easily when using the other sawmill by just walking across here. That gap in the floor, as I talked about in my last video, I'll be filling that in, taking out that two by four, taking down the tarp, so that'll allow easy access. 
One thing that I'm going to do, I think, and this is all thinking because I haven't obviously done anything yet. I'm going to create a little bit of a space between both sides of the log deck as opposed to putting those, those, uh, those, those pieces across. That's going to allow me to drive the tractor right in, not only to scoop out debris from in between the log deck uh, sides, but also if I ever need to pick up a load of lumber, I can pull the sawmill out of there, drive the tractor in between both sides of the log deck, pick the load of lumber up and back out. That's my thinking at least. That's one of the reasons I decided on this. You guys had plenty of good ideas out there and I walked around here many, many times trying to figure out the logistics of things. I was thinking about putting it back here as well. The only trouble I was gonna find uh, if I put the sawmill sort of right parallel to this sawmill is that I don't have good access back here to bring logs in, turn them around and load them onto the sawmill. That is, of course, without clearing a whole bunch of trees. And even if I cleared some trees, I'd have to drive in, make that corner with the winch on the back of the tractor, towing logs, drive in, and then somehow fish a 90 degree angle to load logs on here. I just thought that might end up being a bit precarious. And so that's my thinking over there to uh, put the structure up front. And one other thing about putting the sawmill, the new sawmill shelter, I guess we'll call it, why I want to put it up front there, five months out of the year we typically have snow on the ground and so it's hard to get around here and so if you guys can imagine the snow is going to shut off the back of the roof it'd be nice if the snow shut off this side as opposed to right in front onto the logs which would be piled up on the log deck out there ready to be rolled onto the sawmill i also want to make sure that the proximity between the new sawmill which would be right here and the lumber shed is close because i'm going to have to carry every piece here Notice how close the lumber comes off that mill to where it gets stacked. I want the same basic idea for this sawmill. I also need to have some basic runway to get in here, uh, backing in the sawmill with like my ATV or tractor. And so I figured having it here, if we look out this way, by removing one tree there, I'd have no problem driving down the trail, backing in here, driving out again and away ago. So that, that's sort of the thinking and that's why we're going to uh, get underway starting to clear some trees here today. Alright guys, so what I've just done there is I put a very, very little bit of tension on the cable. I don't want to torque on that tree over there, I still have to cut it. You guys can imagine, if I put a lot of torque on that, I make the back cut. The back cut might start to uh, barber chair on me and we're not going to do that. So just enough tension on the cable just so it picks it up off the ground. I'm going to go do my face cut, then we'll do my back cut and then hopefully it'll fall sort of in line with where the cable is all right so we're sort of threading the needle here i'm going to try to get the tree to fall in between this red pine here and the log deck keep in mind this log deck's being replaced if it clips it it's not a big deal but i think it'll be all right where some of the concern comes from if you guys look up top to that red pine right there see all the branches up there it's probably going to trim them off and well that's uh that's not bad because that tree's going to be coming down eventually anyways uh one of the things i'm trying to avoid you guys see the edge of that that roof there we don't want to hit that obviously that's why i have the cable hooked to it i could probably make this cut and not have it hit the building you know nine times out of ten but the tenth time is the time that gets you and we don't uh we don't want to have any 
any of those especially with structures or anything like that so let's make this cut then we'll pull it with the cable and we'll help guide it down that way want any cable pull on it I guess I wanted to go exactly as it was generally I don't like to cut too much of the back cut there just enough to hold the tree but obviously it had a good lean on it so it took itself out fell right where we wanted so that's a good thing I guess we'll put the cable into action on the next one the next one's gonna be this one guys have a look at it right here so this one I could have it come across the log deck uh, the only trouble with that I don't want to break anything not yet anyways, because then I want to load these logs onto there to cut. Alternatively, I can try to try to pull it through there. But if you guys have a look upwards, have a look up there. You guys see all those branches? I'd have to pull it through those branches there. Whereas over here, there's nothing. What are we gonna do here? I guess I'll think about it. Cable's locked in still. See if we can hook it up. Success. Okay, just gonna pull the slack off that and we'll give her a cut. Well, that didn't go as planned. Probably what I'll do now, uh, I'll just rejig it. And then I'll, uh, I thought I'd be able to break the branches pulling it down. I'll rejig it somehow. Maybe I'll pull the stump this way. exactly what I envisioned but came down nonetheless safely and that's the most important thing I thought we were gonna make it between those two trees obviously the branches were too tough and uh, so we got her down as you can see the log deck held up just fine that's good to see though that's well built 
I guess the next one here, instead of trying to thread a needle between all the branches here, we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna have this little guy fall right on top of it. Then we'll have three trees we can process. thing about tree work if you guys don't do tree work or maybe you're in better shape than I am it certainly puts sweat on the brow but it probably also doesn't help that I've got uh, I've got some battles with some 30 degree temperatures out here today but we're making the best of it we got three logs or uh, three trees rather down on the ground as I said I'm gonna buck them to length now just figuring out what I need for lumber uh, then what we'll do we'll get the grapple on the tractor clean up some of the brush you guys see around here these are these limbs pile them up some more come back for them another day uh, with the uh, with the uh, wood chipper on chip those up and then we'll load the logs up onto the sod deck or log deck and we'll get them sawn so that's uh, that's what we're up against yeah I certainly either need to be doing more exercise or maybe cutting more wood so I don't sweat as bad when I finally do it anyways back to it
Okay guys, I think we're just about ready to call it quits there for today. I'm just about ready to get back in the tractor and drive myself back up to the shop. Got the forks on the front, gonna move around some IBC cages of firewood. Be sure to come back and check that out. We accomplished a lot out here. I definitely got some exercise. Probably got some vitamin D from the sky and I certainly gave some blood with some bugs. What we did was we cut down three trees here. Eventually, we'll cut down the rest of the trees here, or at least four or five of them, in order to make way for a bit of a continuation of the roof line there on my lumber shed. That continuation will then protect my brand new sawmill, my uh, 2022 HM130 Max, the one on the trailer. That'll sit right about here. Right here, we'll be getting a log deck. This will be open. In between both sides of the log deck, it'll also be open. So if I ever want to take out some lumber with the tractor, and drive right in between it and lift the lumber back right out. That is, of course, if I don't have logs on the log bunks. Anyways, that's going to be for another day. First things first, we're going to be back out here real soon, sawing the logs into lumber up on my older sawmill. And I've also got this guy down here on the ground. That's about a 20 footer there. I'm not sure if I'm going to make that into a beam for my structure I'm building or what. But that's going to sit there for now. We'll uh, be sure to document that on film if we do try to cut a 20 footer on a 16 foot 11 mil we'll see how that goes anyways guys i'm glad you joined me hopefully uh, you guys get yourself outside and get some fresh air maybe don't give some blood with uh, mosquitoes and that but get out saw some wood and enjoy yourself it's a beautiful life out here glad you guys joined me give her the old like a see you guys next time